I'm going to go through this example problem where we do material balances on a two unit system with a recycle stream. The problem statement says a liquid binary mixture of toluene and benzene is separating using two distillation columns. The feedstock to the system contains 50% toluene and 50% benzene by mass. The bottom product of the first column, which contains 10% of the mass in the feedstock, is 90% toluene. The top product from the column splits into two streams. One, a recycle stream that returns to mix in just before the feed to the first column, and two, the feed to the second column. After the recycle, the feed directly into the first column is 49% toluene. The second column has a bottom product of pure toluene and a top product of 98% benzene. Determine the percent of toluene in the feedstock leaving in the bottom product of the second column and determine the percent of top product that is recycled. With any problem like this, the first thing to do is to draw a process flow diagram with all of the information given in the problem statement. It told us that the first column's top product splits into two streams, the feed to the second column and the recycle stream back to the feedstock. For simplicity, I'm going to denote toluene as T and benzene as B. Now I'm going to go through and label all the process streams with their mass flow rates and mass fractions. Note that for simplicity, and because this is a simple material balance problem, the top products from the two distillation columns are drawn as liquid, where in reality these would be vapor streams and they would be condensed by a condenser. But for simplicity, the condenser isn't mentioned in the problem statement and is just assumed that it is there condensing the top products. If a problem statement for a similar problem mentioned having condensers at the top, you would have to draw those and include those in your process calculations. So now let's fill this in with all the information that we're given in the problem statement. So we know that the feedstock to the system is 50% toluene and 50% benzene by mass. We know that the bottom product of the first column, M.3, contains 10% of the mass in the feedstock. So we know that M.3 is equal to 0.1 times M.1. And we know this bottom product is 90% toluene. We know the feed directly into the first column after the recycle point is 49% toluene. The bottom product of the second column is pure toluene. And the top product of the second column is 98% benzene. You'll notice in the problem statement that they didn't give us any mass flow rates. This happens fairly often, and whenever it does, it means that you need to assume a mass flow basis. For assuming a basis, all you do is pick a certain stream in the process and assume its flow rate. Usually you want to pick something that's simple to work with, so I'm going to assume for my basis a feedstock mass flow rate M.1 of 100 pounds a minute. Now that we've assumed a basis, we have all the things we need to start solving the material balance. The first thing I'm going to do is solve for M3 since we know that M3 is 10% of M1. Sometimes the hardest part about these problems is finding a starting point. So the best thing to do to find a starting point is to look at the streams in your process and try to find a balance point that will incorporate the streams that you know the most about. So in this case, you can see that we know the mass flow rate, the mass fractions of the feedstock, the mass flow rate, and the mass fractions of the bottom product. And we know the mass fractions of the top and bottom product of the second column. So what we can do is a material balance on the overall process with the feedstock being the one in inlet stream and these three being the three outlet streams and we can determine the mass flow rates of the top and bottom product of the second column. We have two unknowns, M.7 and M.8 and we can use two equations to solve for those two unknowns. The two equations we're going to use are an overall mass balance on the system and a toluene balance on the system. Since we want to get this mass balance equation in terms of one of the unknown, I'm going to solve it for M.8. Now I'm going to use our second equation, which is the overall toluene balance on the system. From here, what we can do is plug in what we solved for M8 in the overall mass balance into M8 in the overall toluene balance to get the toluene balance in terms of just M.7. From here, you can rearrange the equation and plug in the numbers to solve for M.7. Plug 
plugging everything in, you get that the bottom product flow rate of the second column is 40 pounds per minute. Dividing that by the flow rate of the feedstock, 100 pounds a minute, you'll get that the final answer for the first part of the problem is that the bottom product of the second column accounts for 40% of the feedstock. Now that we know M.7, we can use our rearranged overall mass balance right here to calculate M.8. The top product of the second column is 50 pounds per minute. Now that we know the bottom product and the top product of the second column, we can do a mass balance around the second column to get the mass flow rate of the feed, M.5. The feed to the second column is 90 pounds per minute. Now that we know all the mass flow rates around the second column, we can do a species balance around it to calculate the mass fractions. So I'm going to do a toluene balance around the second column. Doing this, you'll get that the mass fraction of toluene in the feed is 0.46. Consequently, we know that the benzene mass fraction is 0.54. Now that we have the mass fractions for stream 5, this also tells us about the mass fractions for streams 4 and 6. Because this is a purge point right here with the recycle and the feed to the second column, the composition of these stream, this stream is not going to change. So the mass fractions in stream 5 are going to be the same as the mass fractions in stream 4 and stream 6. At this point, we have enough information to calculate the mass flow rate of the recycle stream M.6. Since we know these mass fractions, we know these mass fractions in stream 2, and we know the mass fractions and mass flow rate of the first stream, we can use what we did before with the overall balance using two unknowns and two equations. We're going to do the same thing for M2 and M6. We're going to use an overall mass balance and a species balance on this recycle point right here to calculate both M.2 and M.6. Since this recycle mix point mass balance gave us an equation explicitly for M2 in terms of the other M known, M6, we're going to plug in the equation for M2 into the recycle mix points toluene balance. Rearranging and solving for M.6, you get that the recycle flow rate is 33.3 pounds per minute. So we know the recycle mass flow rate, but we need to know the percent of the mass leaving the top product of column 1 that's being recycled into this flow rate right here. So we still need to calculate M4, and we can do this using a mass balance around the purge point, since we already know M.5 and M.6. You'll find that M.4 is 123.3 pounds per minute. If you divide M6 by M4, you'll find that 27% of the mass leaving the top product of column 1 is being recycled back to the feedstock. And that's our final answer. I hope you learned something from this video and that it helped you understand how to solve material balance problems. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutoring videos by Purdue OXE.